Back to World Crisis Radio, Webster Topley here in Washington, D.C., our 12th night epiphany, New Year's uh, edition. It's just a couple of uh, things left over, loose ends from the previous uh, coverage uh, concerning the Lukashenko re- uh, reshuffle of the entire uh, Belarus uh, government. We have uh, the interesting fact that Pavel Kalavur, K-A-L-A-V-U-R, has replaced Nadzieja Ermakova as the chair of the National Bank. This guy is a banker, 2010 to 2014, headed a commercial bank, uh, was uh, 17 years deputy chairman of the National Bank. Now, when we look at this uh, neoliberal uh, website, uh, we are told that uh, Kavalur is the only free marketeer of the group. Now, I would, I don't know how, uh, we, we're just learning, we're just finding our way in uh, Belarus politics, but I would guess that a uh, an experienced uh, po- politician like Lukashenko would want to put Kavalur, Kalavur as the uh, sort of uh, pro-market banker uh, for show, right? He's there as a as camouflage. Uh, and anything goes wrong, Kalavur will be uh, will be shown to be responsible. So I don't think that might be uh, something worrisome, but I think uh, Lukashenko, we have to assume he knows very much what he's doing with a, uh, an extremely... Um, sensitive position. The other one is in the uh, Syriza program. One of the things they're saying now is that they promise Merkel and Schäuble a real tough crackdown on tax evasion. In other words, rich oligarchs illegally exporting money, flight capital by parasites and speculators. I hope they don't forget about Steve Forbes. Steve Forbes was over there at the worst point in the Greek crisis, and the word was he was trying to privatize the Parthenon into his own grubby hands. So that's the kind of thing that could uh, could go on. Now, we're going to face a fight which in this country is going to be defensive. I'm sorry. In Greece, it's offensive in Belarus, it's offensive, and in Russia, it's uh, it's you know advance and retreat. But uh, in this country, uh, you might have seen Larry Kudlow, the former former cocaine addict, uh, on CNBC the 29th of December, and he says, "Why is it that all these people refuse to join the labor force? We've got to force them to join the labor force. We've got to cut benefits. We've got to cut shred." the social safety net. Kudlow, how about offering them a decent wage? You want to get somebody to work in your free market? You talk free market all the time. You have a free market creed. Well, offer a better wage. Maybe somebody will come forward. Enough with the coolie wages. Enough with the anti-American, anti-historical, low-wage economy. Don't, Don't get the government to force people uh, back uh, out uh, onto the street by by destroying the benefits that they've paid for many times over. And now the other, this is now the Republicans. You can't believe it. This is now a statement by Republican austerity ghouls. And this, uh, you want to get uh, kick off the new year with a bang. Uh, these Republicans, every last one of them, all the new Republican senators have signed a statement where they pledge to vote to eliminate the food stamps program. This is worse than Ron Paul. You'll remember Ron Paul at the end of 2011 put out a program for genocide against the American people. He wanted to cut food stamps by 62, 63 percent. Here it goes. Eliminate. So from Pellagra Paul to <coughs> genocide Gardner or uh, <coughs> Joni Ernst. Unbelievable. So here's what they say. Small business and the American people cannot afford President Obama's countless new regulations and tax increases. I don't know which. Uh, There's a right way and a wrong way to improve our welfare system, and his policies are 
not working. We need to put poor people first and lower costs. Now, listen to this. How do you put poor people first? I guess in the line going into the gas chamber, quote, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, is an overreaching federal program. My God, Bob Dole is the author. It's an overreaching federal program that has actually worsened the nutritional standards in this nation and increased uh, costs. I am one of the millions of Americans who wish this program would end. To make matters worse, SNAP benefits are discouraging full-time job creation. We need to repeal the SNAP program and replace it with more affordable free market solutions. What those are, they have uh, no idea. This comes from uh, Senator Neo, Senator-elect still David Perdue. And let's remember who they are. Cory Gardner of Colorado, David Perdue of, Do- of Georgia. I hope it's Les Illusions Perdues, David Perdue, P-E-R-D-U-E. Joni Ernst, remember her, 9 millimeter. Tom Tillis, reactionary from North Carolina. Tom Cotton, Manchurian candidate. James Lankford of Oklahoma. Steve Daines, Montana. Mike Rounds of South Dakota. Shelley Moore Capito and of West Virginia, Ben Sass of Nebraska. And remember that Sass and Cotton are somehow a tandem of Manchurian candidates that may be uh, directed towards higher, greater things. Newly elected Republican senators signed pledge to eliminate food stamp program in 2015. How many would die? Because we know it's uh, what, what's it's it's forty five to fifty million people get food stamps. The local economies in many places depend on food stamps because of the incompetent parasitical ruling class that doesn't create jobs. They call them job creators. Well, where are those jobs finally? Well, all I can say is see you in Nuremberg, Republican Neil newly elected. Uh, senators, and uh, we wa- we see what you're doing. We won't, we will not forget. So that means we're going to have to fight back on this. Now, remember the uh, the likely areas: uh, immigration. The, the xenophobes would like to roll that back, right? Start deportations once again. Tax reform, of course, from the Republicans, it means more tax cuts for the rich. Trickle-down economics, if you're lucky. Free trade, trans-Pacific partnership, the giant sucking sound. The uh, Obamacare obviously attacked that. Food stamps, you just heard it. This is going to be a fight. So, But the problem is you can't sit there and let an oligarch attack you according to his timetable. You've got to knock him off balance, right? General MacArthur didn't sit in Australia waiting for the Japanese to attack. He thrust forward into uh, New Guinea and uh, knocked them off balance and kept them off balance from then, uh, from then on. Now let's look at some other issues. Our hats are off to the Pope. Um, pope Francis has outdone himself here in the Christmas season. After pushing Obama to open to Cuba, and we talked about, I hope we talked about that, um, the way you hope for a liberalization or a loosening of um, police state controls is through greater prosperity. In the case of the German Democratic Republic, DDR, it was the Leipzig trade fair, Leipzig Messe. The people who came into that meant that Leipzig became the starting point for the downfall of the East German Communist regime. Back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. It's already our last segment here on the Epiphany uh, edition. Pope Francis... Uh, in his um, the Midnight Mass in St. Peter's on Christmas Eve, in the Orbi et Orbi uh, address to the world and the city on Christmas Day, uh, and also in calls to the Kurdish refugees. He called the Kurds and he said, you remind me of Christ. For him there was no room at the inn, and for you there's also no room at the inn. Thanks to the machinations of NATO, Saudis, Turkey, Qatar, you know the you know the list. Um, Pope Francis did a regular anti ISIS campaign. 
Uh, it's interesting to note he does not do this for Ukraine. He does not commit his prestige to those mm, dubious characters from Lavov, let's say. He does not go out on a limb for them. But for Syria, he does. For the Melkites, the Maronites, the Chaldeans, the Copts, and, and, and many others. Uh, in his Urbi et Orbi, he attacked the brutal repression going on in Iraq and Syria. The brutal repression by ISIS is what it means. And he also recalled the situation of the Palestinians. It's interesting to note that Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian Authority, had appeared at the Midnight Mass in Manger Square, Bethlehem, to take part in a Christian Latin High Mass in that uh, setting, right? No, no U.S. network that I could see reported that, but it was on one of the um, international uh, cable uh, channels. Pope Francis is also in the Urbi at Orbi particularly talked about the contemporary Herods will uh, take a look at uh, tarpley.net. You'll see that in the uh, program two weeks ago, I believe, I indicated that Prince Bandar was a new Herod. <laughs> And, uh, well, and then uh, the Pope talks about the uh, the new Herods. Um, so there may be some uh, convergence on that idea. The new Herods, in my opinion, Bandar of Saudi Arabia qualifies as a new Herod. Netanyahu of Israel, a new Herod. Erdogan of Turkey, certainly a new Herod. And ISIS Czar Allen, a super Herod. And these are the people tormenting. And the 28th, yesterday, the day before yesterday, the Holy Innocents, right? The massacres that have gone on. Well, Alan gets himself into that, uh, league. In the, uh, homily of the, of the mass the night before, he talked about, uh, this was, this was broadcast, uh, live on NBC. The people who walked in darkness will see a great light. The darkness of war and oppression. But he's, he also points out not the rich, not the powerful, not these others will be leading leading the way. So this adds up to, I think, a tremendous um, effort. And again, our hope remains that Pope Francis will pull Obama out of the clutches of Allen, the ISIS czar, who we want out. We're still hoping for how about we couldn't we couldn't get Allen out. For the Latin Christmas, let's get Alan fired for the Orthodox Christmas. I think that takes us up to what the sixth or seventh of um, of January. We'll we'll look it up. You look it up too. The Orthodox Christmas, the Russian Christmas, the Greek Christmas is going to be uh, at least another week uh, away, and so there's still a chance to fire Alan for Christmas, the new uh, Herod. So that's all going on um and we hope we hope for the best now concerning the stuff with the new york city police uh my uncle was a new york city cop so i'm not against the new york city cops but here's what i would say when you have a modern state you must have civilian supremacy civilian supremacy over the armies military forces and over the police Police and army and other military forces must obey the legitimate, legally elected executive. Uh, and this turning backs or making public demonstrations of political rancor against de Blasio. De Blasio is a scoundrel. I know that better than anybody, but this is a wrong path. This is Weimarization. Huh? You take a look at the, uh, the Berlin and Prussian police in the Weimar years, and you'll see that they were politicized completely, and sometimes good, but often also bad. So here's what I would say. I was watching uh, Fox News the other day, and here comes this guy, um, one of their commentators. They ha he came over from M from CNBC. Essentially, the, the argument from Fox News is that de Blasio has lost the confidence of the police and therefore has to resign. My God. Do the police elect the mayor? Do the police impeach the mayor? This is monstrous. The police have no ability to elect or impeach or oust a mayor. 
The mayor is elected by the people. In this case, a fairly substantial majority. Oh, but it was a low turnout. That doesn't matter, Republicans. How about Bush? You never, never heard that about Bush. But the point is, de Blasio right now is the legal mayor, and this stuff about mounting a political protest at a funeral, this is awful taste. This is a monstrosity. Now, we're told by people close to the uh, the pulse of the Big Apple, part of this is contract talks. Now, here already our attitude changes. If you're a cop and you want a decent wage from de Blasio, we're all for it. Stick to that. Stick to that. Don't mix the, the, the contract talks left over from Bloomberg and Giuliani and other union busters. Don't mix that with these tragic shootings. And we're also told that this demagogue Lynch, Pat Lynch, the uh, demagogue who's currently the head of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, I'm sorry, this guy has to be out, but he's he's up for re-election in January, and he's trying to out-demagogue his own right-wing opposition. But you get the idea. Back off and fight your contract battle. You're going to have wide support. But don't mix in the idea that somehow de Blasio is responsible for murder. This is absolutely ridiculous. And there has to be police reform. Uh, that is uh, is clear, but it should it doesn't have to be vindictive. It's, it would simply go together with winding down the um, the um, so-called war on drugs, right, which has gone way too far. The other thing, of course, is we have to sympathize with the police to this degree. There is an unjust order of property in this country. It's unjust. It's unequal. It's unfair. It's delegitimized. And nevertheless, they have to represent this and defend it. Uh, some of them uh, like defending it. Those are the bad apples. And some of them are embarrassed that they have to defend it. And that makes them even more uh, sensitive. So you get the idea. Um, we have a couple of other uh, things, right? Navalny. Navalny has been taken into custody in Moscow. And, uh, well, that's... Uh, Probably not the worst uh, thing. Anyway, we'll leave that up to the uh, the Russian uh, government. What else can we can we add here? Um, we're going to be looking this year at the possible orientation of U.S. politics of Jeb Bush against Hillary Clinton. This is awful. Uh, we'll have to look into this. Uh, who's the alternative? Bernie Sanders. On the Democratic side, Jim Webb, well, maybe there'll be more than one Webb in the picture. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, but this is awful. So it's time time to think already now how to, how to avoid uh, such a situation. So to sum it up, we got a worldwide economic contraction. That's why the price of oil is going down, the price of copper, the price of iron ore. All the basic things are falling. Deflation would seem to be upon us. In the middle of that, you've got Russia under attack with these sanctions, under attack with uh, speculative runs on the ruble. They've got to defend themselves using dirigistic methods. Same thing with Belarus. Greece is fighting to break out of the austerity straitjacket. And indeed, the reason you've got this contraction is because there's no demand, and there's no demand because of austerity in Europe, the sequester in the U.S., and similar measures all around the world. So we know what to do. We have the program. Stay tuned to World Crisis Radio. We will fight our way out of this depression. See you next week.